Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Reed of Neo Metals. How are you today, Chris? I'm very well, Tracy. Yourself? Well, I'm great. And Chris, what a pleasure it is to interview what is, you know, you're basically the leader in the lithium market right now, and you've come such a long way in a short period of time. So let me just start by congratulating you on being up, what, 347% last year. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I just have to correct that. They're probably one of the leaders in the junior lithium market. We're, we're not yet a producer, but looking forward to joining the ranks very soon. Well, yes, and thank you for clarify, clarifying that. And also, I'd like to congratulate you on rewarding your shareholders. You've just recently done a return to shareholders and an on-market share buyback. I'd love it if you'd start by telling our Investor Intel audience how they'll be rewarded by being a shareholder at Neo Metals. Okay, well, in, at, at Neo Metals, look, we've, we've um, taken the opportunity and, and, and needed to sell down some equity to bring in China's leading lithium producer, Ganfeng, as, a, as an off-take partner uh, and, a, and an equity partner in the project. So as we've sold down in two tranches so far, we've built up quite, uh, quite a good war chest. Uh, at the end of the month, it'll be about 68 million Australian dollars. Now, that's far in excess of uh, what we need to retain a, a prudent level of cash. So, um, we are looking to return some of some of the cash uh, to to our shareholders. Um, you don't want to give it, or, you know. You, we want to, as we're coming into production, we want to give something that, that's potentially sustainable. Uh, so, we're giving back two cents a share, and then we are conducting. An on-market buyback to uh, to sort of reduce the number of shares we've got on issue. So, Chris, in addition to being a fantastic leader in the lithium market right now, you were recently speaking at an event. Actually, it was our Technology Metal Summit, and you wrote that the stake is really in renewable energy storage, solar, and wind when it comes to the lithium market because there's all kinds of uh, uh, what do you call promoters out there right now. There's lithium companies exploding left, right, and center, and I'd really love for you to to comment further on that uh, on that idea. Right. The uh, yeah, I think I said the stake was uh, the renewable energy storage, and and Elon and the electric cars were the sizzle. Uh, in terms of the volume of lithium, um, you know, we we see the the growth in the amount of lithium battery or energy storage as a whole being really more driven from renewables as opposed to the electric car. Yes, the electric car it's got to compete against the more efficient fuel cars. Uh, that we're we're getting now. You've got these small turbocharged diesel engines, and you know they they use a fraction of the fuel they used to. Uh, we still think electric and hybrids are very very compelling. Uh, certainly, the Chinese um, committing to the electrification of transport, and in a very short period of time, going from perhaps a third of what the Americans produced to last year exceeding them, and this year you know they could double or triple. Um, the electric car sales that the US do is very, very positive and it's caught the market uh, you know, in a short position. What we see is that as battery costs come down at the start of 2015, they're about 800 odd US dollars a uh, kilowatt hour of storage. Then after the, the power pack and the power wall announcement by Tesla, you know, it's down to 350 a kilowatt hour for the residential US 250 a kilowatt hour. Uh, for the power pack, which is the industrial 100 kilowatt hour storage pack, you know that each one of those packs is equivalent uh, to more than a Tesla car. So you know the 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 success of that launch was that they essentially took orders to fill the Gigafactory uh, in two weeks. So the Gigafactory will have the demand there um, to take it at full production which is equivalent to 500,000 cars, but we see that there's probably 100,000 worth of cars, of batteries coming out for cars. The rest of it will be coming out for the power pack and the power wall. Um, and this phenomenon is not just limited to Tesla. You know, you, you drive the battery storage cost down to 250 bucks a kilowatt hour, and you know, you, you, you've bypassed the cost of the grid. Um, I think uh, Warren Buffett's NV Energy signed an agreement last year with First Solar in a, for a 25-year uh, solar battery array uh, at a fully amortised cost of about 3.8 US cents a kilowatt hour. Now in Australia, we pay probably 15 US cents a kilowatt hour. So, um, you know, solar batteries and storage have got a far uh, greater market uh, than 
than just the electric cars, we believe. I mean, the, essentially, the electric cars at this stage are for rich people. Um, think about what, uh, you know, there's a billion people in Africa without reliable energy. Um, you can't ship them um, diesel and diesel generators. Um, but if you gave them a couple of panels and a battery, you know, then they're, they're pretty much self-sufficient for power. And that um, also goes for India, where there's about 300 million people without reliable power and the government's committing $22 billion over the next couple of years to fix that. Now, when they were faced with taking telecommunications and telephone to the, the masses there, they went mobile. So think about this as mobile power. You don't have to build, build co big coal-fired power stations. You don't have to build massive high-voltage transmission networks. Um, you know, everyone is essentially energy independent. So we see this as the biggest growth market in lithium in terms of volume. Well, speaking of growth market, you had a, your most recent, one of your most recent announcements was you made an offtake and equity investment with China's leading lithium producer, Ganfeng Lithium. Can you tell us more about this? This sounds very exciting to me because they're the leading producer from China. This sounds big. Yes. Yeah. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, well, look. You know, their, their market cap's about, you know, three or four billion dollars, depending on what the Shenzhen Stock Exchange is doing on, on any one day. Um, they are the most diverse lithium producer in China, producing everything from lithium metal, lithium hydroxide, lithium carbonate, butylithium, which is used uh, to stabilize rubber in car tires. And obviously, the tire industry in China is pretty big because it's the world's biggest automotive in, uh, market at the moment. Um, you know, all the way through to pharmaceutical grade products. So, you know, they are um, the fastest growing, the most profitable uh, company. So we're very, very proud to have them as a partner uh, at Mount Marion. You know, we've signed a, a life of mine off take with them. Um, we're currently doing a massive drill out with a view to increasing the resources uh, and a new reserve around mid-year. Uh, and hopefully we can consider a, a decision to increase production further from Mount Marion. So, Chris, we are delighted that you're going to be one of our uh, prominent speakers. Uh, you'll be our lunch uh, presenter during the Clean Tech and Technology Mail Summit. This is our fifth annual one. And, you know, Jack Lifton is saying that, you know, we're going to be addressing the technology, technology metals demand, supply and demand in uh, the clean tech revolution. I'd just love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, look, I think it's got a, a, a super role to play, a lithium, you know, in everything from transport uh, through to the renewable energy storage, you know, what it does, um, you know, it drives a lot of the other metals. So, you know, lithium is only part of the battery. It needs nickel, cobalt, manganese, titanium. It needs lots of other um, metals that uh, we, we would call them transition metals to enhance the probability or the, sorry, the potential uh, of the of the uh, technology metals, which is is lithium, you know they're very complementary. So, you know it's it, it's good for everyone. You know, cheaper power, ergo means less costs and and more projects can get built. Okay, well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to hear from you. Thank you very much, Tracy. You have a great night.